Hello again, it is I, the Serial Yapper Legendary, and I'm back with another Foxhall video about the new facility buildings added to Update 59. First of all, thanks for all the engagement on all the YouTube comments as well as the Reddit threads about the new facility buildings. Uh, I took as much time as I could to answer all your questions as well as received a whole bunch of questions that uh, I didn't actually think about testing. So I actually spent so much time going through all your questions and looking at some of the nuances that everyone asked that I thought I would spend a little bit of time here to just put out another video, just showcasing some answers to those questions and talk a little bit about the usability of these new buildings as well. All right, so let's jump into your questions as well as just do a couple of clarifications on some of my observations from the previous uh, videos, uh, which was obviously the previous testing that I did. So first and foremost, there are actual icons now. Thanks so much for Secretpedia on the Foxhole Wiki for uploading these. And I basically ripped them straight off of the Wiki and here they are and they look awesome. Uh, so this is what the infantry arms factory looks like and the special issue and the small arms workshop on the wiki currently still have the same icon, but I'm sure this will be fixed in a day or so. Uh, so for the rest of this video, I will be using a basically a combination of the official icon as well as my own little swing on the modifications here so that you can see which one is the special issue firearms building and which one is the small arms workshop, or as I like to call them, the crate variant structure and the mini MPF. All right, but again, uh, thanks so much for Secretpedia for uploading the official uh, icons in as high resolution as you can get them. Uh, additionally, we also have an icon for the crate transfer station and it looks glorious. Um, one thing to keep note of is the crate transfer station actually shows up on the Intel map and this is what it looks like. And very interestingly, when you hover over the icon, it also shows what is currently held within the transfer station itself. However, it only shows public disassembled crates that is stored within the transfer station itself. So if you are running a private facility and you don't want people to see uh, private built crates that you are storing within the transfer station itself, you don't have to worry because it won't show up on the Intel map. But like I said in the previous video, <clears throat> the crate transfer station cannot be squad locked. So you can't prevent people from coming to your facility and taking those reservable crates and putting them in their own private stockpile. So you can't stop them, but at least the devs have put in the ability to obscure what is being held within. All right. so. We have a bit of a middle ground here. Uh, people can't see what's in your transfer station if it's private, but if it's a public crate, um, it shows up on the Intel map. All right, let's jump into our first sort of questions here, and then we'll talk about some of the answers to them. So uh, Cyclone here asked, could you use a Bluefin to allow crating though? Which basically means that can we use a supply ship like a Bluefin to basically act like a storage depot or a seaport. And additionally, uh, excellent one on Reddit asked, can you unpack disassembled crates into a pallet or uh, do, do you have to reassemble them through a storage depot or a seaport? So to answer the first question is, you can actually convert disassembled crates into regular crates through a Bluefin. This is the first thing that I tested the moment we unlocked magic boxes, which was about a day or a day or so ago. So unlike what the tooltip says, you can actually submit disassembled crates to a Bluefin and then it will be converted into a regular crate. But do note that you can only create public crates this way. So if you have reserved disassembled crates and you submit them to a Bluefin, they can only become public regular crates. So this interaction does actually work. And this is a little bit surprising from my end because the tooltip specifically says 
that it should only work with storage depots and seaports. So I'm not sure if this is a bug. I did report this to the devs. So we'll see if there is some clarification or if this is just a incorrect UI element that snuck into the dev branch. So hopefully we're either going to get a clarification or this is a bug and it should be fixed. So for now, in the dev branch, you can actually convert disassembled crates into normal crates through a bluefin. This led me, or this led me to do a couple of more interaction tests. And the main one was, can I submit disassembled crates into a long hook? Luckily, this is not allowed. So you still need to have either a bluefin or a storage depot to filter your crates into regular crates. And then in the long hook, it won't uh, accept it unless it is the usual crates that we are accustomed to. Additionally, I also tested various other stockpiles that might not be as intuitive, but for now, we can't submit disassembled crates to pallets or any trailers or any specialized vehicles with stockpiles inside of them. And you cannot put disassembled crates inside storage rooms or similar structures. So for the most part, disassembled crates must go to a storage depot like building, whether it be a seaport or in this case also a bluefin. So this actually made me go on a bit of a tangent and it made me think, well, can I actually use disassembled crates inside my facility buildings? Because remember, the crate transfer station allows you to submit any crate and hold it inside of your facility. So I was going down the rabbit hole of, well, can I, for example, get some crated B mats from a refinery, put it inside a crate transfer station and then hold it there for when I want to make pallets inside my small assembly station. That was the main sort of logic that I was going past. Like, can I keep crated goods inside my facility? And then when I need to use it for a recipe of some kind, or if I need to make something with it, can I transfer it out the transfer station and then into my facility buildings to then use? Is this an interaction that's quite possible? And from my testing, I have found that unfortunately, you can't submit disassembled crates into a building's stockpile. So you can't put it into anything that requires access or interaction with the stockpile of the facility building itself. So you can't have disassembled crates of CMATs or EMATs that goes into a stockpile. Uh, this one just happens to be an infantry arms facility, but you get the idea. So for the most part, with regular facility structures, you still need to convert your disassembled crates into regular crates if you wish to right click and submit to stockpile. And this also holds true if you're creating a personal queue of items being created, you also can't uh, submit uh, disassembled crates into those recipes itself. However, there is one exception to this rule. So it's a bit nuanced and can be a bit confusing. So take it in strides. There is one exception to using disassembled crates inside recipes. And that exception is if the recipe itself is a crate. So just for clarification, you can't take disassembled crates and put them inside uncrated material recipe slots. This is impossible. You will get an error message. However, if the recipe itself is requiring a crate of something, in this case, a crate of Booker's or a crate of Neville 20s or a crate of shrapnel mortar, then you may use disassembled crates to submit this into the recipe queue itself. Okay, so this is very important, can be a bit confusing, but essentially if the UI is a picture of a crate, then you can use a disassembled crate in this situation. All right, took me a while to play around with this, but this is the interaction that does actually work. So there's something for you to use uh, if you want to optimize your facility builds a little bit more. This also means that you can have one special interaction between all the new facility buildings and the recipes that they added. If your facility is 
uh, producing items from the mini MPF. And you also have a special issue firearms structure or the crate variant uh, version of the IAF. Then what you can do is you can mass produce shrapnel mortars from the mini MPF, take the disassembled crates and then immediately pipe them into the crate variant version to create incendiary mortars. And incendiary mortars are ridiculously strong. You can put town halls on fire with 15 of them. They are insane. So if you're going into the new war looking to do something cool with your facility, I would recommend making this structure. Create shrapnel mortar somewhere on the midline and then immediately variant them into incendiary mortars. These are really good weapons. So I would highly suggest that if you want to do something facility related, try this one out. And of course, they are super fun to use, uh, but I hope that uh, I don't face them, <laughs> especially in bulk. So uh, if you're on my team, absolutely make them. When you're the opposing team, close this video and don't listen to me at all. Of course, uh, I'm joking, but that's how it is. Okay, in terms of the interaction here, the disassembled crates from the mini MPF can go into the recipe to create incendiary mortars here. So this interaction works great. And I can see a lot of facilities uh, doing this uh, in the upcoming war. All right, one final thing uh, before I close off the disassembled crate interactions is if you submit a regular crate into the recipe required to create a specialist weapon. So for example, if you have a regular crate of Booker's or a regular crate of Neville 20s or a regular crate of shrapnel mortar, and you add it to the recipe, but then decide to change your mind. Um, you know, maybe I want this in the front. And if you cancel the order by right clicking on the item that you submitted and retrieve all, so bring it back into your vehicle facility or sorry, in your vehicle inventory or your facility inventory, this will produce disassembled crates. So you can't mix or match regular crates or disassembled crates into the facility itself, it will always output disassembled crates. So this is one thing to be careful of. When you click the button, be sure that you want to make these materials and you don't need to rush them to the front or anything like that. So you can't keep a crated version of your materials sitting in your facility. It just won't allow this interaction at all. Okay, so let's move on to the next question, which is more about the mini MPF. So we have EG0611 on the YouTube comments that specifically targets some of the interactions that the infantry arms facility, as well as the mini MPF allows us to do. So their question basically asks, what is the maximum storage of any recipe that is created out of the infantry arms facility? And their second question is, uh, can they have a personal queue of sticky bombs? And how does that interaction work once the queue finishes? So it's basically what happens when my recipe is finished and how many crates can the building itself hold? Because they don't want to use the crate transfer station inside their facility builds. Well, let me answer the questions bit by bit. So the first question is answered with, I think it's 32,000 crates. So I think any recipe that you build inside the IAF, regardless of whether it's the base facility or any of its variants or specifically the mini MBF one, I think it can hold 32,000 crates. Now, unfortunately, I didn't test this one because the only effective way to test it is to set up a very, very large queue of these uh, crates and let them cook over a large duration. Now, unfortunately, I just didn't quite have the manpower to do this test um, because it's very, very repetitive. So I still need to test this, but facility logic dictates that this is probably 32,000K or 32K. Um, this holds true for shells, stockpiles, or anything along those lines. So I think it's probably still the same. I do need to test this though. So maybe I will test this if I have some time during the week. But realistically, 
32,000 crates of stuff is probably a safe bet to have. So the next question also uh, comes to what happens when the queue finishes, what happens to those crates, and also are they reservable? So this is how this interaction works. If you are cooking a personal queue of items, regardless if it's uh, an, a mini MPF specific uh, recipe or just a generic recipe, if you click on the recipe items themselves to submit the ingredients, then the net result will be as many resources as possible it can create as reservable crates that you can then collect. So if you switch the queue to personal and you put in 10,000 CMATs and 10,000 assembly materials one, then you will get the appropriate amount of reservable uh, items from that result. In this case, it's the club. So let's say you'll get 10,000 clubs out of it. Now, what's most important is these items will be retrievable by clicking on the item itself. So then you can then go and retrieve it. If you switch your building to public mode, then obviously you don't submit resources directly into the recipe selection point itself. You would rather submit all the materials to the public stockpile of that building, and then it will basically burn through all those resources and convert them to the appropriate crates. When you use the public mode, then the crates will always be public. All right. So again, the limit of these, probably 32,000 for both. So if you are in the process of making reservable crates, you want to switch your production mode to personal and then click on these items to create your personal reservable crates. But if you're just constantly running the MPF and once it's finished, it must boot up and start another queue, you set it to public and then you just toss all your resources into the building stockpile. All right, uh, next couple of questions here is again more about how the IAF works and specifically what recipes we have at this point in time. So Event Terminator, Cheater, uh, 0248 and Sapper all ask essentially what recipes do we have available in the mini MPF at this point in time. So on the initial release, this is what we can make. We can make all the base mortars inside the structure. So you have your shrapnel, HE and flare mortars. You can also make uh, some basic anti-vehicle grenades. So for wardens, this is the flask or the white ash grenade. And you can also make the sticky bomb for both factions. Uh, colonials have access to the Ignifist. So if you are in the process of making Ignifists, the mini MPF is there for you to use. Uh, we do not currently have the new uh, uh, anti-tank mortars or the anti-tank uh, mounted grenades. Sorry, not mortars, but mounted grenades that you saw in the trailer. Those are not in here. I think the devs are being a little bit reserved in what we have available straight away. And then additionally, we also have 20 millimeter ammo as well as smoke grenades that was literally added yesterday. So devs are going to be touching on what can and can't be available inside the small arms workshop or the mini MPF. I think they're watching and monitoring it very, very carefully. As I've also been reading some of the dev posts on the Foxhole official Discord, they are being very careful with what they add. So I would not expect to see ammo such as 8mm or 7.62 or any of those inside the mini MPF for the update war. But if the devs wanted to move some resources around, this is probably where they would do it. This is where they would make things more accessible to facility users, as well as getting a boost to the overall war economy is going to happen inside this building. All right. So I wouldn't be too uh, hooked onto these numbers or onto these recipes right now. The devs have already shown that they're willing to make quick changes to them. But for now, we do have access to all the mortars. 
the basic anti-tank weapons, sticky grenades, flasks, or ignis, as well as some specialist ammo here, such as 20 mil and smoke grenades. All right, so the final thing I wanted to talk about is actually the small gauge container car. So this is one thing that I also tested since I made the previous video. I kind of went really gung-ho in testing the new facility buildings and getting a couple of crates of stuff and trying them out as well as testing all the interactivity with disassembled crates. But I really slept on this one because the devs made a mistake on their uh, video. So on their video, they said that the small box car is a way to transport crates across small gauge rails. So in my mind, I thought this was uh, regular crated goods as well as disassembled crates because you know that would make a lot of sense the, to transport between all the various structures however the devs got this wrong so i am not sure if this is a bug or they just made an error in the slides and the presentation that they made because the small gauge container is re a regular vehicle inventory slot you have 15 slots of anything that you want in there not specifically crated or disassembled disassemble crated goods. It's just essentially a logistics truck on rails. And this is awesome because you can now do stuff like this in your facility. And I have a couple of videos to show you guys. So, uh, wait, how do I play this? Uh, oh no. <laughs> uh, well, that's a, oh, there we go, press space bar, there we go. So here you can see, you can now open a maintenance tunnel and submit Maintenance applies directly in the tunnel itself. This is amazing because this is one of those things that you have to upkeep when you're running a facility. So thank you, DevMan, for implementing that this way. And I really hope that this, the BMS stow wheel is working as intended and they just made a mistake on the slides. Uh, but also, and very importantly, you can now human pipe things between facility buildings which you normally couldn't have done if you had to use uh, stuff that couldn't fit on a flatbed cart or an oil cart. So here, same idea. I go to my facility. I pull a whole bunch of maintenance supplies. I can now human pipe this into a maintenance shuttle. There you go. Just to show that you do get to move things across. Now, this is amazing. If you don't know what human piping is, I'm gonna explain it to you. So, in large facilities where you have a couple of people that can help out, moving items from one facility structure into another is one of the main things that you constantly have to do to constantly keep production going. This is a very tedious task to do if you don't have an auto clicker because traditionally what you would have to do is you would build a large uh, number of these small train carts, preferably a train with four carts, and then you would sit and you would click all the items onto the carts, and then you would have to right click and submit it to the appropriate uh, facility. However, if you have two players, both with auto clickers, which is something that logistics players all have, let's be real, we all use auto clickers, and both of these players need to go AFK because that's something that we do. You know, we auto click something and then go for a bathroom break or something like that. This is now something that we would traditionally only do when we would do something like moving um, materials through a flatbed from one facility to another. And previously, if you wanted to move non palatable materials or uh, fluids or uh, coal or coke or any of those materials, you would have to do this through a regular logistics truck. And this was one of the most frustrating things that I had to figure out to add to my own facilities. I would have to figure out a way to squeeze in a R1 truck or a heavy truck or something like that into my facility builds because you can't pull these individual items to a cart at all. You had to use a regular truck and then you had to 
right click or shift right click into these buildings and submit these items manually. So this was a very tedious thing to do. It took up a lot of time, specifically if you build mega facilities and you had to essentially pull items manually and submit them yourself. This took a lot of time and what ended up happening was a lot of facility builders would build maintenance tunnels literally inside or on top of regular materials factories so that they don't go mad just constantly pulling, driving, submitting, pulling, driving and submitting. But with the stow wheel, this now allows us to do something like this. We can now take a dedicated maintenance supplies factory. We have two players that are willing to uh, spam left click or to auto click. And here we can now do the interaction that I showcased in the second demo video that we had before. You can now easily cook 32,000 maintenance supplies inside your facility structure. You have one person to sit and pull items into the stow wheel. And then you have a second player just sit and auto click into the maintenance tunnel. So even though maintenance supplies, their costs have gone up. I know that's very annoying, but the devs added a way for us to human pipe maintenance supplies uh, from the materials factory into the maintenance tunnel itself. So this is an amazing quality of life update. This is probably one of the most significant changes or additions to the game that the devs added for logis logistics players. So if you run a facility, get a friend, get them to have an auto clicker, have an auto clicker yourself and fill up your maintenance tunnels so that you don't have to do this chore every single day dedicated for a couple of hours. Right. So awesome change. And I really, really hope, I really, really hope this was not an error by DevMan and uh, you, these box carts are supposed to be created. So I'll be very sad if there's an update in the next two days where they fix, fix quote unquote, the stow wheel to only be created supplies. All right. So finally, and this is the real funny, this is the big funny moment. Um, you can make a small train with four of these bad boys on. This would mean we now have a new vehicle that is the champion of holding crated materials in one go. So a small train with four stow wheels is equivalent to four basic logistic trucks or an entire large uh, shipping container. So I, I really want to hope and believe that if this goes unchanged, that somewhere in Foxhole, someone is going to make a small train with four stow wheels loaded with supplies from a seaport or storage depot and drive it to the front. I really hope that happens. And uh, if you're on the colonial side, please be Kegler. It's a very specific player. I love him to bits. He does all these crazy things with small trains. I really, really hope he does this. So if you're a frontline logistics player, you also got a massive buff. You can now submit 60 uh, or 60 crates of whatever you want directly into a frontline bunker. You just have to avoid dying on the small train or dying from artillery shells or anything like that. So I'm very excited about this. Uh, the stow wheel is awesome. Great quality of life update. And I really hope it's not a bug and dev man just gave us an R1 on wheels. That would be amazing. And I'm really excited about it. Um, okay, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks again so much for all the comments. If you have any further questions, just put it in this video. Uh, I will read through all of them. I'll answer as much as I can. And uh, if there are any updates that come out uh, after this video with some significant changes, I'll do a third follow-up video. But I think for now, very excited about what DevMan has cooking for facilities. The mini MPF is going to change the meta of the game. Incinerary waters are awesome. The stow wheel is awesome. Try them out and I'll see everyone for the update war and uh, all the best.